So we're now in the starting location for our background. A mercenary, I guess we're in a tent. We're in a kind of fading town. And I forgot to mention this in the last video, is that um, this town seems to believe, or I at least believe this town and the whole background of the story. I'm just showing you a little bit about the um, scale of the game itself is that it looks like it was maybe after or the setting excuse me is believed to be after the Roman Empire is actually falling there's a lot of ambient life that we can talk to there's slaves palace guard customers customers uh, people who sell things bad parts of town and if you do in fact buy this game you'll realize how quickly these bad parts of towns can be So the game is totally up to you to decide how you want to play it. You can try to be a um, killer, but that probably won't <laughs> go too well on you. So let's go ahead and go back to our character. Uh, we have inventory, and we can open up our skills. I think this is inventory. I believe it is to be. We can equip our helmet. I advise that the more gear you have actually is the harder the game is going to be. It restricts your movement just like in real life. So let's equip. We have 178 gold. Um, we have a gladius and we have a, uh, a dagger, a fit. So let's go ahead and equip the gladius. So it looks like the game is kind of based around the fall of the whole Roman Empire. You have different factions of course, but that could just believe, be what I believe in. So let's go ahead and talk to, to the innkeeper. It looks like he wants to talk to us anyway. Easy on the wine, dancing man. You're working tonight, remember? Don't worry about it. As you talk, a tired man in dusty weather clothes enters the inn and looks around. Several caravan Caravan crewmen carrying his chest and bags inside. The man carefully expects his belongings after a brief conversation. Pray pays the crewmen. Hell to you, Master Gracious. It's been a while. How may we serve you? The innkeeper's attention is on Gracious, which doesn't prevent him from gesturing to his servants to pour Gracious some wine. Three fingers indicate the quality of the wine. Roast the fresh bird over the coals and move the chest to the storage. I have room for me and storage for my goods. Find me a good lower master and send one of your guards to make sure I'm not disturbed. Says Gracious. Tossing the innkeeper coin. Let's go ahead and continue. That's all we can do. Did you hear that, dancing man? Our guest requires the pleasure of your company. So go clean yourself and do something useful. Change. Uh, we can say I need better gear or we can go right away to the room uh, traders room Let's go ahead and say I need better gear now. You're telling me go to the trading plaza, but don't waste any time the client is waiting uh, Good day dancing man, please tell me if you need anything so we can talk to the merchant and try to shop stealing We can try steal, but that will probably not turn out well for us so let's go ahead and talk to the store. Welcome, uh, merchant. Welcome to my store, my friend. I have the finest selection of goods at unbelievable prices. So please make yourself at home and browse the merchandise and remember, when in doubt, buy it. It's better to regret buying something than regret not having it when you need it the most. Am I right? Why am I telling this to you? You look like a smart kid, so you know this already. Am I right? Let's browse the wares. We can get a shield. Shows us our equipment over here. Once you actually sell it, then um, you'll be, depending on what weapon you sell, obviously you won't have that weapon anymore. Getting good armor right away in the game may seem like a benefit, but in my personal experience, is that's not really a good idea. Uh, you have different armor penalties depending on how fast you can strike or whatever. So we can get a shield. We have blocking for a reason. So let's go ahead and buy a shield. Just in case. I'm not real good with the fishing net. He didn't buy the fishing net, of course. So let's go ahead and increase, uh, equip a buckler. 
So, the small shield favored by quick fighters that has a convex shape designed to ward off blow. Due to its small size, the buckler is useless in unskilled hands. We could have gotten better shield, but we might as well not have. We can right click and it will say, it's going to be dark soon, you should head to the end. Let's go right away to the end. The trader looks at you critically. Frowning at the dents in your armor, keep unwanted visitors out of my room, he says before turning away. You will not be disturbed, master, and will stand guard. Um, perception success, you awaken in the middle of the night by a soft click coming from the lock. The door opens and a shadowy figure slips inside the room. Determined to earn your pay, you show put on a show, lunging at the intruder and making enough noise to wake up the tra uh, traitor. When you're satisfied with your efforts, you throw the unfortunate thief out of the room and turn to the traitor. Who is that? asked the traitor, looking visibly shaken. Uh, because we have enough uh, streetwise, we can try to get a success. Assassin master, he almost had me, but I couldn't give up, knowing that your knife was in life was in peril. So we can try to make the traitor like us a little more, give us a little more gold. I owe you my life, he exclaim, exclaims the traitor, apparently gratefully relieved. If you're ever in Mad Maladorian, talk to Kimberton and tell you I tell him I sent you. He is careful and doesn't hire anyone without a recommendation from someone he trusts. He'll take care of you, dancing man. Thank you, master. A shadow slips in the room through the window and without oops, uh, any time. He raises a loaded crossbow, pointing it at the traitor. Hold on, guys. I gotta check something. Hi. Right. Sorry about that. So, let's go ahead and continue. Gracious, says the assassin com calmly. The commercium wishes to remind you that you're still not you're still not welcome in this town. He pulls the trigger before he finishes talking. Gracious falls down with a bolt in his chest. We can either wait or we can attack. Let's go ahead and wait. We do not want to get in combat right away. I was paid kill once as a assassin matter of factly, as if explaining things that should be obvious. Since I don't work for free and you can you can relax and put your weapon down. You will walk away with your life and my business here will be done. So let's go ahead and attack him. There's a lot of language in this game, so sorry about that, guys. And I, uh, we don't have enough action points to be ran to him. We can dodge the assassin's attack. So assassin hits you for two points of damage. The armor absorbs four, so that's really good. Let's go ahead and hit the assassin. They all have different stacks, modifiers, bleeding. They'll bleed for two damage per turn which is not that bad. He's slightly wounded. And we'll go ahead and end our turn by pressing space. We dodge the assassin's attack. Um, in the bottom of this little grid, it says he's wounded and it will tell us if he's almost dead. Let's end our attack again. We have 29 HP, 27 HP. Our HP is going really far down. We hit him again. Let's end our attack. Looks like it takes 3 AP to hit him. He's badly wounded. Hopefully we can kill him in time. We have 26 HP. He's almost dead, luckily. We're just gonna miss all our attacks. Run out of AP. He dodged his attack twice in a row. That's really good. Miss. Hit him. And he goes down. So we'll have to press space again. You offer yet another sacrifice to death who smiles upon you and rewards your dedication by whispering insights into your ear. And we gained one combat skill. So we can go ahead and search him. We can sell this stuff for later or we can equip it. So let's go ahead and take all. Um, looks like his leather armor was kind of broken there. And we can search Gracias as well. He had 25 coin or gold, sapphire, topaz, golden ring, uh, expensive robe, expensive turban. We can take that as well. Um, so a couple men are on the floor. We take everything valuable from the chest and let's go ahead and leave the room and talk to the innkeeper. 
There's nothing left to do but wait for the innkeeper to sort this mess out. Let's continue. I feel like we took everything from the room. You notice that the trader's clutching small, clutching some parchment in his hand. You take it mostly, uh, mostly out of curiosity. It's an old map. Might fetch you a couple of imperials. Wait for the innkeeper. Um, fuck, he says, looking at the dead trader thoughtfully. Well, I suppose we all knew it was coming, although it would have been nice if he was killed elsewhere. How do you expect me to run a business? He sighs. His goods are still in the storage, the, continues the innkeeper with a different tone. We can sell them to the commercial limb for nothing, or we can actually make a few coins. What do you think, dancing man? I wouldn't say no to a few coins. Alright, then take the goods to Cato. Vardius will handle the notifications. Noti notifications. I cannot talk. So all you gotta do is watch his back and show him that we need business. The easiest money you'll ever make. So let's go ahead and take the goods to Caldu. That's an interesting name. The 40 Thieves Guild is a long and seemingly indefeatable. Uh, indefeatable network of thieves, smugglers, and other criminally and kind citizens. The guild operates in every town and traces its origin for the to the earliest days of the empire. It says that in the past, the forty kingpins of the forty largest towns used to coordinate the network. Opinion is divided as to the relations and ties of the forty thieves guilds are yo and currently incarnation, but the name persists. So we don't know where they got the name, and they're on the town we're in. The guide operates out of a local tavern, a popular destination for people who feel at home in shady parts of town and dark alleys. The tavern is full of people laughing, arguing, and drinking. At the back of the tavern, piles of loot sit atop tables, waiting to be counted and divided. At the far end of the room, Cato conducts his business while keeping an eye on the guests. We can wait. Ah, uh, Vardius, my friend, how are you? Cadios is all, Cado is all smiles. Who's with, who's your friend? Don't tell me you feel you have to bring some muscle with you. I'm hurt. Cado checks the goods, pays without haggling, and just like that, the deal is done. Let's head back, says Vardos, looking relieved. Let's return to the inn. The ducks, the dogs come out of nowhere. You follow Van Vardanis who grows more confident with each step, taking talking business and making big plans. When two met men step out from the shadows, they look at Vardius and smile as if he were the long lost kin. Spare coin, one duck asks, pulling out a knife and smirking at his own joke. As joke. Don't be so eager to die for nothing, friend, says the thug. You see, Vard and me go way back. We have a lot of catching up to do, don't we? So here, he throws you a gold coin. Take the rest of the night off. We can either fight two enemies, which would not be a, the smartest thing to do, or we can just walk away. Um, we don't really know who Vard is, and we do not definitely want to fight two thugs. So we can think about a little bit more. And this is the kind of um, things you will have to decide in your own playthroughs. And I think we should just take the coin and take the rest of the night off. That seems like the better plan, in my opinion. I don't want to die too early in the game. And we can fight, but fighting two characters at one t point is pretty much death. So let's walk away. Where's Bardanis? Where's the money? Dead, I assume. And as often is the case, he's one who's... As is often the case when one's chasing easy money. Fuck, the innkeeper says, mirroring his earlier statement. But at least we tried, eh? You gain a new insight, which can be used to increase your skills. 11 skill points gain. Yeah, we tried. Got any new jobs for me? Seemed that the last two men you were supposed to protect ended up dead. No, not really, dancing man. The imperial guards are recruiting, though. Might be the place for you. Might be. Do you know a good lore master? Talk to Ferg. Uh, we can rest and go pay for a good visit, rest and go to the Imperial Guards Fort, rest for the night. So let's go ahead and rest and go pay for a good visit. And this will, will be, um, time to end the episode. Didn't really know how we're that. 
I hope you're liking the game so far. Um, it's pretty fun to me. I actually really much enjoy this game. And I maybe played it maybe five days in a row. Even though I was busy with other things before I started recording it. So I hope you guys have a great one. And comment and like if you like the game so far. And I advise you to get a copy of this in your hands if you like a harder RPG. I'll see you guys later. Thanks for watching.